Have you ever been confused? Why is it that you chose to be silent even when you didn't know what was going on? When you didn't know what was going on in that lecture or that meeting? Why is it that you chose to be silent when really you just wanted to be heard? Let me give you an example. So you've got onto a crowded bus and suddenly there becomes a seat available. And this seat seems very attractive because you've been standing for a long time at work today and your legs are aching. But there's an old man standing next to you and now usually we give up our bus seats to the elderly. But unknown to anyone, this old man has actually been on a train ride for 10 hours, sitting down the whole time. So he's actually quite happy to be standing. Suddenly, a teenager with loud headphones hops onto the bus and takes that seat. Now you continue to stand there uncomfortably with your legs still aching. Why is it that we choose silence as opposed to speaking? Why is it that we choose to remain in uncomfortable states of being? Was it so hard to have just asked the elderly man, do you mind if I take that seat? Or would you like to sit down? Are words truly that expensive? More expensive than being comfortable? Well, luxury says yes. Remember, there's luxury, then there's quiet luxury. Quiet luxury being brands like The Row, and luxury being brands like Gucci, Chanel, Prada. The row is subtle elegance. It doesn't have a logo, but it does take care of its design and quality. Gucci, on the other hand, screams opulence from the second you see its logo. Then there are brands like Zara, Lamborghini, Ferrero Rocher and Ferrari. Now we don't see these on TV, do we? Well, we don't see them on TV because they are banking on their silence in the advertising industry to go noticed. They're banking on your word of mouth instead. These brands have access to the same sort of money marketing teams and talent, but why is it that their silence speaks louder than those of other brands? Who or what is banking on your silence? And was silence really your choice? Was it the right one? Well, ideas are often met with silence when you first propose them. Well, on WhatsApp, we often put up plans. So on a Sunday night, you want to go out with your friends, so you post a plan on a WhatsApp group. And first, there's silence. Then first person says, I'm in, then the next, and then the next, and then you're on a trip, before you know it, to Burkina Faso, the capital of Ogadigur. Ideas and silence. Ideas usually are met with silence before someone believes in them. So back in the 1830s, tomato ketchup, yes, the tomato ketchup that we use every day and is found on our tables, was proposed as medicine it claimed that you could use it for indigestion, jaundice, and diarrhea. 
Crazy, right? Whoever came up with such an absurd idea? Well, I'm sure if you saw an article that looked like this, you would believe it. Tomato ketchup was sold as pills. And who was it that thought of this idea? So Dr. Archibald Miles, who claimed he was a doctor, but was not, saw that America was embracing tomatoes. And he used this and tomatoes medicinal properties to sell pills. And he named it Dr. Miles Compact Extract of Tomato. Sounds like the sort of herbal medicine that you might buy at a pharmacy. Very attractive, right? Well, who was brilliant enough to second this idea? Or was Dr. Miles' idea met with silence? Well, there was Dr. John Cook Bennett. He was a doctor, and he believed in Dr. Miles' idea. And so, he decided to sell tomato pills. Ideas and silence. If I was to propose an idea of an underground road network, it would be met with absolute silence. But if I was to say, hey, should we go get pizza? Everyone says, I'm in. Well, I've been thinking about silence a lot lately. Who or what is banking on your silence? Was silence really your choice? And was it the right one? My thoughts landed me on this discovery. Voice, thoughts, silence. Voice, thoughts, silence. The three pillars that we use to dictate who to speak to, where to speak, what to speak, and when to speak. They almost lean on each other. One requires at least one of the others to give it that spark. Each of them are a spark on its own, and for it to become a flame. This theory tells you when to keep your mouth shut and when to speak. Let's head to the next chapter. Speak now or forever hold your silence. I have this friend called Bob who works at a restaurant called Ceviche's. Now, Ceviche's, last week, had their manager resign. So now it needs a new manager. Bob and Tim are the staff members that are being considered. Bob is really likable, very friendly, warm personality, great chef, and wonderful customer service. Tim, on the other hand, standoffish, rude, not very well liked. So on Friday, Ceviches decides to have a vote for the manager. And on Sunday, they decide to announce the results. Friday is Ceviches' busiest days as well. On Sunday morning, they gather and the results are announced. Tim, standoffish rude Tim, has been voted the manager. There's silence. What happened? Well, when we don't like what's happened, we always ask, what happened? So each of the staff members came up to Bob and asked, what happened? Well, let me tell you. So, Ceviches has 27 members of staff. Only 10 members voted on Friday. And 17 did not. Was that because the 17 members of staff who didn't vote? Well, did they not have heads? Absolutely not. Of course they did. Well, is it because they didn't have any thoughts? I'm sure they did. Well, who was banking on their silence? Was Tim banking on their silence? Was silence really their choice? And was it the right one? Now, imagine that you work at Ceviche's and you are one of the 17 staff members 
that did not vote. Well, Ceviche is now is under Tim's regime because Tim is the manager. You are struggling because he's rude to you. He undermines your work and disrespects you. He doesn't take into account anyone's opinions. Ceviches is suffering because the work ethic is bad and the food is suffering. And after seven weeks of Tim becoming manager, Ceviches closes shut. Why is it that you didn't vote? Was it because you didn't know Tim and Bob well enough to make a choice? Is it because you thought, well, everyone likes Bob, so of course he's going to be the manager. It doesn't matter whether I vote. Did you lack the confidence to place an opinion or take a side? Or was it because Sabichis had a work ethic where you couldn't particularly voice your opinion? Did your silence cost you too much? Was it expensive? Who was banking on your silence? Was it really your choice? And is it the right one? Well, now picture Ceviches as your country. Tim and Bob are leaders of political parties. You don't like the new tax cuts, you don't like the new healthcare system, and you certainly do not like the new minimum wage. Did your lack of vote cost you? Was your silence too expensive? Did your indifference finally speak? Thoughts, voice, silence. The world population today is made up of 25% of under 15 year olds, 10% of over 65 year olds, and the vast majority being made up of 15 to 65 year olds. Now let's say hypothetically, the World Health Organization creates a recommendation for pharmaceutical companies to create the polio vaccine based on the world population. Now countries like Africa, which has the largest, youngest population, it has 40% of under 15 year olds. If their country leaders didn't speak up to say they needed more of the vaccine compared to WHO's recommendation, then their country would suffer a mother who was too busy taking care of her child that day, the day the vote took place, who by any chance has a child who is suffering from polio due to the lack of availability of vaccine, would witness the heart-wrenching pain. Silence can be expensive. Thoughts, voice, Silence. What qualified me to give you a meal on silence today? Well, I was that girl who watched discrimination in a room full of people or at work and decided to remain silent, afraid to cause a scene. I was that girl who didn't know what was going on in that lecture and was too scared to ask because I might look dumb and so I remained silent. I was that woman who really wanted someone to say hello after a long summer vacation when I entered the office full of people, but I was met with silence. I was also that girl who was too afraid to break the silence after me and my friend had a fight, and so I let the silence brew, afraid to apologize and so I watched my friends disappear. Silence has so many layers. It's like lasagna. There's silence in quiet, luxury fashion. There's the beautiful break of silence, 
when you first shed your ego to apologize. Then there's the silence that is broken by a piano in a restaurant that takes away the awkward pauses from a nervous first date. There's the silence when your mum puts a hand on your shoulder and looks you in the eye, telling you it's going to be okay. Then there's the silence when you see something that's wrong, but you decide to remain silent anyway. I'd like you all to join me in a moment of silence. Please bow your heads. Well, that's a deadly silence, we all know. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. That is your meal on silence served.